Hello, welcome into a Phoenix tutorial by CDP Inc. I'm Matthew Donnelly and today we're going to be looking at editing activities in Phoenix. Without further ado, let's get into it. So now that we've loaded into a project in Phoenix, we can select on an activity, for instance, grade site, and to edit details about this activity that are separate from our activity editor at the bottom, we're going to need to use the toolbar at the top of our screen. And if you see this first option, it is the activity code editor, and it's going to open up this panel and we can choose our activity codes to assign to our activities. So you see here grade site has been given a WBS code level one of Orange Grove substation. It's been given a level two code of construction, a level three code of below grade. And it also has a subcontractor code that's not enabled. If we enable it there, you see that we add another level of organization to our activity table. To set up the organization structure for these codes, we're going to need to go into our info system menu, code library, and you can see each of these drop downs has the code level and code values underneath. And we can add, edit, and remove those in this code library dialog box. The next area in our toolbars at the top is going to be predecessors and successors, otherwise known as relationships. And if we toggle both of these predecessors on the left and successors on the right, you'll see that our activity codes remain at the top and we need to untoggle those in order to just show our relationship blocks. And to create a relationship, there's two ways. We can either choose to enter IDs manually or use the option to relate multiple. And if we choose relate multiple, it's gonna open up a dialog box for adding successors or predecessors where we're able to choose the relationship type and we're able to choose an activity to relate. So I'll choose set foundations as a finish to start with grade site and I'll relate it and you see that it locks it in there in that successors data block on the right. After we've added in our relationship in the predecessor or successor data block, we have the option to insert a lag, change the type again. We also have this feature called lag2, which enables us to put a lag until a certain date. We have the go to feature which works if we highlight a successor or predecessor and choose go to, and it will automatically zoom us to that activity. We also have the ability to toggle our task notes editor where we're able to write activity specific notes. And if we drag the header, we can enable our notes editor to float with us or we can lock it in place back on the side of our screen. The same goes for our other toolbars that we activate at the top. We can drag these and drop these in different locations for max customization of our screen. Lastly, to change the resources assigned to mobilize, we need to come up to our toolbar and choose to toggle resource assignments window where it shows us our resources, the total number of hours worked, the daily number of hours being worked, and we have the option to choose whether to prorate the cost or have it accrue at the beginning or end of our activity. On the left hand side of our data block, we have the library option which enables us to add resources into our project's resource library. Similarly, the add button next to it enables us to choose those resources and add them in to our specific activities. And lastly, if we make any changes, we can choose to apply them and lock those into our activity. 
As always, thanks for watching. You can find our website and further videos at www.cdp-inc.com. We'd love to hear from you. Please reach out to our email or phone number and connect with CDP Inc. on LinkedIn. See you in the next video.